As last week, the weather is overcast with some rain. Evenings, yes, are definitely on the cold side. Sunday was spent in West Sussex celebrating my youngest granddaughter's birthday. And while there, I made a collection of fallen leaves. It's the wetting and the drying out which causes the cellulose of the cells to break down. It requires some form of galvanised water troughs as a lining, at least to improve the drainage. Monday the 9th of October started the week off in depositing the leaves in their prepared bin. Tuesday 10th of October we had a call from Canada last week to wish the kids a happy birthday and to tell us we can expect a visit this Christmas. Why am I telling you this? Well it means decorating is on the menu and the allotment takes a back seat. Great Scott my love, she's your sister not the Queen. We are decorating. So we went to Royal Tunbridge Wells, nice town, a bit like Harrogate, to look at ranges of wallpaper and a nice lunch and on return too late for the allotment, I put a mouse to mat and designed a proposal for a potting bench. The intention is to make this bench just using these three tools plus one extra one. But before we can do anything in the polytunnel we've got to clear it and make some end frames for the muddy boots enviro frames which is subject to another video which we're going to call second week in October part 2. Following from last week's frost protection, I liked the use of timber laths to hold the fabric in place over the frame. I had used elastic tape to hold the Enviro mesh in place, but this had perished due to weathering and required to be replaced and therefore decided to give the timber laths a go. To help in holding the mesh and laths in place, I tried to use double sided tape which turned out to be a duff idea. In the end I reverted to just using the staple gun. And having finished one side, I then uh, pulled the fabric back and stapled the other. Lats now in place. All that was left now was to release the frames so that I could get into the cabbage patch and uh, plant my kale plants. Mm -hmm. 
Being brassicas, I could bury these deep in the soil to give them a firm basis because these plants grow quite tall and I'm uh, hoping that the cabbages that separate them will be long gone and eaten before these kale plants reach maturity. As with the planting of any plants into a bed, when finished they need a good drink. And because slugs are a problem on this plot, I also give a good going over with slug pellets. Planting over, I now put the frames back into position and cover them over with the Enviro mesh using the new laths to hold them in place. Other pocket, Michael. The other one, that's it. Kill plants in, embedded, are now left to do the onion sets for the autumn onions ready for next year. I had bought 50 sets from Wilco and I've planted 48 of them because they're in. 8 inch centres of rows and 8 inches between each set and in a 4 foot bed that gives me 48. To protect the sets from pigeons and sparrows, the sets are protected with netting supported on plastic tubes, which leaves me to say thank you for watching, hope you enjoy the video, I hope enough to give it a thumbs up, welcome to any new subscribers and if you've not already done so, please subscribe. But till the part 2 upload, do take care, bye for now, bye.